You might be in the loop about Septentrio's anti-jamming features, but haven't witnessed it firsthand. Hello, I'm Joy from Septentrio. Let's put it to test. But first, what is GNSS interference? It occurs when inherently low-powered GNSS signals are overpowered by other radio signals on the same frequency. It can reduce positioning accuracy or cause receivers to lose RTK or even PVT altogether. To observe the effect of interference to the signal, we will use the spectrum plot on the web UI. We will use a chop jammer which generates wideband interference at L1 and L2 signal frequencies. We will focus on the L1 band. Before the interference is introduced, we have the spectrum clean flag and the receiver provides RTK fixed solution. Let us see what happens when the jammer is switched on. There is a wideband interference on L1 frequency that appears on the spectrum plot. We don't worry about that as our receiver is equipped with AIM Plus, Advanced Interference Monitoring and Mitigation Algorithm Technology, which helps to mitigate the narrow and wide band interference. The Septentrio receivers have three notch filters, which can be used manually or automatically to filter out interference at any frequency within GNSS bands. To mitigate the interference, we set these filters to auto and switch on the wide band mitigation filter. To take a look at the spectrum as well, we set the spectrum plot to after interference mitigation and we observe that the interference is mitigated. The comparison setup, we will take a third party receiver and the Mosaic Go to compare the abilities to mitigate the interference. The GNSS signal as well as the generated interference are mixed and split between the two receivers. We will then observe their performance. In the first case, we will observe and compare the number of satellites tracked by the receivers after the introduction of the interference. We will observe the C over N graphs to visualize the number of satellites tracked taking 40 decibels as our reference point. Currently, the receivers are powered and there is no interference. So, what happens when the interference is introduced? The number of satellites tracked reduces in both receivers. However, Septentrio's receiver keeps track of approximately 25 satellites with power above 40 dB, while the other receiver tracks no satellites above 40 dB. In the second test scenario, we will use a third-party software to observe what should happen when switching on your receiver in an area where a jammer is active. The software shows a ground tack of the receiver positions. The scale is one box, represents 50 centimeters. Both receivers are currently off. The green pointer 1 is Septentrio's receiver while the red pointer 2 is the other receiver. The orange point represents the actual position. Both receivers have been connected to a static antenna. Septentrio's receiver begins to give the position closest to the actual position in seconds, while the other receiver is still giving in accurate position by 4 to 5 meters. Septentrio's receiver quickly regains RTK fixed solution, while the other receiver takes a longer time to regain RTK fixed solution. I am sure you are now convinced about the performance of Septentrio's receivers in wideband interference. Any more questions, visit our support page on our website or feel free to contact us. Thank you for watching.